uh, YouTube repo man 64 and we're still here you know why the rapture hasn't happened yet but it's going to um, I've been just for new subscribers uh, been watching for a very long time have had timelines on my wall for over 20 years uh, trying to figure out when Jesus is coming back but something has happened in the last three years four years um, mostly from the Revelation 12 sign um, six almost six years ago on September the 23rd it will be six years ago the Revelation 12 sign happened but I have never seen so many people with so much information uh, coming out nowadays uh, that are watching and trying to figure this out and so that's very encouraging to me as somebody who's been watching for a very long time it should be very encouraging for everyone I want to say to anyone that's on the fence about the rapture it is not imminent it is a set date it always was as we've been trying to figure this out and when it's going to happen it is a uh what does it say it's a glory for kings to seek it or it's uh it's fun for kings to try to seek it out and for god to hide a matter and what's happening is we're just shaking that present trying to figure out what's inside and each box we open there's another present in like another box we have to open in another box and these are all dates that we're getting to and as we take this journey going through all of these dates there is nothing wrong with it because what i've seen over the last 40 years 35 years is that knowledge has been increased i have seen babes in christ that literally have been watching for a year or two and you know who you are who have come up with some staggering information startling stuff that i never even realized and then when i apply it to what my strength is is a timeline i've taken six thousand years not all of the six thousand years of information but a lot of it and put it on a timeline I believe the first day of the year is always March 17th. I do not believe the moon has anything to do with the first day of any month or the first day of the year. I think that the moon is a reflection of Christ, which is us, and we are nowhere near perfect. We are going to be, but the moon cannot be counted on as to when we determine the head of the month. But what I'm seeing is these babes in Christ that are just finding stuff, and I am floored by it personally, as somebody who's been watching for a very long time, that the Holy Spirit is working in so many. And there's something new I'm seeing here lately, and that people are galvanizing to their position. And I'm going to show you this in this video, the different placements of people. Some people will really see this and understand it and others will not it might actually make them angry but i want to assure you the one place that we are to be saving people from is not tribulation the purpose of tribulation is to change the minds and hearts of those who think they have to work for their salvation the purpose of tribulation is to drive people to their knees to accept the Lord and tear off everything, just like Elisha did when uh, Elisha was taken, right in front of him. He stayed behind Elisha the entire time, and you will see the saints right there with the bride the entire time. They are watching, but they are not. They're counting on their works, and I'm going to show you that. And my job that I have been given, that we've all been given, is to plant that mustard seed the mustard seed of the people that are on their way to hell the ones that are going to be cast in the lake of fire because they just would not kneel down perhaps they hadn't heard that it's a free gift it is as simple as simple as accepting that free gift there is nothing else you don't have to go be baptized you don't have to tithe you don't have to be good you don't have to stop cursing drinking you don't have to do anything. Now, this is going to rile some people up, I know. But that's okay. When you are truly saved, there is a work that begins inside of you. You will not want to 
cheat. You will not want to lie. You will want to be honest. You will want to tithe. You will want to help other people. You know people who do this who are nowhere near Christian. They have no faith whatsoever. They believe in nothing, but they give money to the church. Why do they do it? What's their motivation? Tax write-off maybe? I don't know. Maybe they're trying to be good enough to get into heaven. And that's simply not how it works. But it's okay because there's chance after chance after chance. I'm going to show you a, a, a picture here of a guy that says there's seven chances. And that's why there's seven churches. I haven't seen that in Revelation, but I'm not going to disagree with it because I don't know. When I say something is not a salvational issue, what I mean is, if you were a bride, you've surrendered everything. You're doing things because it's fruit of what is happening inside of you. The wheat and the tares look almost identical in every way. To, for, to gather the tares and burn them up is not an indication of going to hell. What that is, is they're going to be cast into tribulation and they will be refined, they will be changed and they will become, like right now, the bride is Luke. It's the, the book of Luke. And the bride knows the order of all things. We can see all of these different groups. If you are a saint, I have nothing against you. As a matter of fact, I worry about you because I have to tell you that you're going to become just like I am now. You're going to tear off the world just like Elisha did. You're going to tear off your clothes and you're going to put on that mantle that Elisha throws down to you. And you will receive a double portion. So this video is an, a mustard seed. It's a mustard seed to those who don't see these groups, these different groups. It is a mustard seed so that when the rapture occurs, what's going to happen? The saints are going to take over. You think they're just going to be getting beat up for three and a half years. I don't know how long it's going to take for the saints to come to heaven. I don't know how long those six seals are going to open. I guesstimate seven days, 10 days, 40 days, 50 days. There's, there's a lot of guesses. I guesstimate that it'll start on the flood when the flood occurred and, and um, Adam was kicked out of the garden. And that's also the date. Well, he wasn't. He sinned on uh, Halloween Day, and that's the day also that the flood began. So, does that happen a year later, two years later? I mean, if it was two and a half years, then something wouldn't be right because then we'd have to back up to where the cross is, as to be. And if it's three and a half years, it'd go back six months, right? It'd come back to the head of the year that we currently know that was changed by God in Exodus 12. So I'm going to go through these slides. This little, man, I don't know how to word it properly. There is no reason to battle a saint. They are fixated on, you must do this. You must be baptized. You must stop sinning. You must always, and they will point out verse after verse after verse of where you must do this. And they are correct. That's what I'm trying to say is the saints are not wrong. For their period. They're simply getting ready for their time. And if we argue with them and waste time on them, we're forgetting about the people who are destined for the lake of hell. And those people who are on the fence that, that are destined for the lake of hell say, ah, there might be something to it, but look at these guys, how they fight. They're so smart. They know so much about the Bible. Both sides are just arguing back and forth. I'm just going to stay up here on the fence just to see what happens. But if you planted that Mustard seed. If you see me go, that's exactly what Elisha said to Elisha. If you see me go, if everyone saw you go, there would be no chance that they would say, oh, I'm accepting the mark. You see these people online right now? They're walking up. Oh, I can hardly wait to get my eyes scanned and do all this stuff. You know, get an implant so I can just wave my hand and buy stuff. That's what they're going to do as soon as this rapture occurs. This rapture is about to occur. Could it happen in the next few seconds? Could it happen uh, the end from the beginning? Creation started on September the 11th. And um, could it happen then? I don't know. Could it happen at the next full moon? Remember, we have two full moons this month. And um, 
I think it's, uh, is it August? Is it a little? I don't recall. Is it the end of this month, August 31st, 30th, I think, is the blue moon. So there's a lot of other channels that are looking at sooner dates than me, which they might be right. I don't have anything on my timeline until September the 1st. It's it's cleared up for the next 45 days. But that doesn't mean I didn't miss a date in the Bible that needs to be on here. Um, so what am I trying to say? Stop fighting with the saints. There is no reason. It's a waste of time. They are locked in. They're galvanized right now. Everyone is, choose this day whom you will serve. It said, um, Moses said that when he came down out of the mountain, choose right now. He was mad. He threw down. He was married. He was up there with a veil over him for seven days. And at the end of seven days, God called him out of the cloud and for 40 days, he spent time. That's one thing I don't have on my timeline 100% correct, which I would like to maybe get some input from y'all is um, exactly when Moses ascended, waited those seven days, spent 40 days, came down, threw down the stones. I think I have that part right. But after that, I'm hearing that there's two more 40-day periods and seven days in between. I don't know where they land. I'd be curious to see where those land. Uh, obviously, I'd put it on this timeline, but if the people right now are being galvanized to their their team, <laughs> they're, 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 and there's nothing wrong with that, I don't think I could ever take a saint that's going to go into tribulation, that will miss this rapture. I don't think I could ever change one, maybe. I think I stand a better chance at talking to somebody who's never heard the gospel before whatsoever. The ones that are all destined for hell. They're all destined. That's where they're going. But then somebody comes along and says, if you see me go, and then they see that event take place, and they're going to be like, oh, hold on a second. I, I've i heard of this before. They will become the great, like just like we are now. We're doing timelines. We're looking at stars. We're seeing numbers. We're gem, do, using gematria. People are having dreams and visions. There's so much going on right now. It'll change. They will become the biggest watchers. There's not just big like us that are just dreaming of this day, who have surrendered everything, don't care about anything other than this day. They will receive a double portion, meaning that they will know more than we do. You think the Holy Spirit's poured out on us now? The Holy Spirit is going to pour out on those people bigger than we ever saw it. A double portion, just like the Bible says. And they will know more about this timeline and when their turn is, because we see them up there in seal six. We see us up in there. It, you can, it, it, it even tells you how many there are. There's 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands upon thousands. And it's, less, it's over 100 million. It's less than 200 million. This is the bride. This group comes from every tribe, not just not just here, nowhere near here. I barely touch anywhere on the planet with this with this YouTube, but maybe it gets shared somewhere else in a foreign country and they hear it. Um, so they, the, the bride is called from every tribe and every nation and every kindred and every tongue, right? The same thing is said about the saints who made it through tribulation. These are those that came out of tribulation. They have washed their robes white. They are carrying palm branches. There is no banquet. There's no crowning ceremony. There's no mansion. But, but they are in heaven. They are there. And we're so happy to see them. I don't know about you, but I've got family members and friends who will say, as soon as I see it happen, then I'll believe. But until then, eh, we're here on this planet, and I don't, I don't think it's ever going to happen. I'm not really looking forward to it happening. Maybe it happens. Maybe it takes 10 years. They, they're complacent about it. They won't be. They will not be once this uh, event takes place. So I want to go, I want, again, what I'm seeing right now is, is people galvanizing to their team, as it were, or their group, as it were, and they're thoroughly convinced of, what you must do, except for the bride. The bride says, you don't have to do anything. We don't. We will. You know, there's a lot of things I did when I was a sinner. 
that I shudder at now and would never do again, can't even con- have no desire to it whatsoever, because the Holy Spirit resides in me and it's all gone. It's just plain gone. I don't have to work at anything. I don't have to work at not doing something because I don't want to do it. It's, it's just like eating something that I hate. Let's see, what do I hate? I don't want to say something because some of you can be like, I love that. I can't believe you hate that. But it's like that. I would never eat it because I don't like it. And it's the same thing. I have a complete distaste for anything that I thought I had to have previously. So they will be the same way. They will be saved. And how many are there? It's a great multitude, a number no man can count. It is so much bigger. But where do they come from? They also come out, and you read this, and I think it's uh, Revelation 6 or 7, seal 6 or 7, I mean, out of every tribe and every nation and every kindred and every tongue, out of them all. So, it's again, not just here. There are channels like this and churches like this, groups like this, pockets all around the world. They're not just here listening to these videos. They're in China, and they're talking about this over there. There's... A Chinese guy over there, or girl over there, right now that ha- God has um, shown him. Have you heard, like, this Muslim guy had a dream about Jesus, and he's a total Christian now, and he's over there talking about Jesus and how it's the only way there. It's the only way to get there, and you, you need Jesus, and he's over there preaching that. It, how did that happen? How did that happen? He doesn't have my YouTube. He doesn't have yours. He doesn't have anybody else's. How did that happen? The Holy Spirit happened. This job is the Holy Spirit. We plant the mustard seed, but God makes it grow. God waters it. At the end of the day, it's not us that does anything. We, in Ezekiel, are told to talk about it. That's all. Once they hear, God will pull the scales off their eyes. God will give them what they need to believe. Am I thinking for a second that we're only waiting for that last person to come in? No. There is a set date. I don't know when it is yet. We're all trying to figure that out. Um, But there is a moment in time that was set long before creation. All right, let me get into this. Let's see. Rabbi Zaif. need to introduce you to him one of these days. All right. Why do I say go to a quiet place? I get I, I get some saints telling me that I'm uh, telling people that it is not a matter of the heart that you have to do this and you have to do this. And I'm telling you, the I don't say things lightly. The Bible's super clear. It is that easy. They will try to convince you that you have all this work to do and you have all this changing to do, and you must repent. From your sin. Nowhere in the Bible does it ever say that you must repent from sin. You must repent, which means you must turn to Jesus, accept the Holy Spirit, recognize who he was. He was God Almighty, came here in the flesh, gave up the ghost on the cross, was buried, and three days later, when when he said it was finished on the cross, it was finished. Why was he buried for three days? Why was he dead for three days? Because he went to Shoel, to hell, to bring out all of those who had died in his name or in his the concept of a savior previous to him dying. He went to lead captivity captive. He brought them out, and you see the story. When he rose, they rose. They rose up out of their graves when Jesus rose. And then Almighty God ascended to heaven And seven days later, the same day that he comes back to see Thomas in the upper room, he does the wave sheaf offering on that Sunday. On that Sunday, he returns to Thomas in the upper room in his glorified body. So when I say go to a quiet place by yourself, nobody needs to know and you don't need to tell anybody and accept the Lord into your heart. This is a quiet moment, a private moment between you and your Father, your Creator. Jesus Christ had your name on his lips when he said it is finished. He was thinking about you. That's why you're here right now. That's why you're listening to this right now. 
He wants to hand you a, a simple gift. Inside that box is everything you will ever need to make it to heaven, to be in the presence of God, to be in his presence. Everything is contained there. All that is required is that you accept that free gift. There is nothing else. If somebody tells you you got to go get baptized, if somebody tells you you got to start being good, you got to stop this sin, I'm telling you that if you accept that gift, all those things will come natural to you. It will be so natural as natural as breathing. You will no longer be interested in this or interested in that. You will no longer have any interest in those things. I'm telling you how it works. Does it take time? Yes, the Holy Spirit takes time to grow inside of you and you get stronger every single day. So, let's read the Bible. But what saith it? The word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. It, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I think the Bible left something out. I think you have to also tithe. You have to be good. You have to not curse anymore. No more drinking. No more cheating. No more anything that you your heart desired previous to this moment right here. The Bible must have forgot something. It did not. That's it. It is a free gift. Jesus Christ paid the price 100% and that is all you have to do is take a hold of that per, that present that he's given you it is a free gift take a hold of it for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confess the confession is made unto unto salvation go to a quiet place by yourself you don't need to publicly do this in front of anybody do it quietly by yourself and then watch the miracle take place and then after that once you, I'm telling you, before you did this, when you saw some sin, you thought, I'm getting over on somebody. And after that, you thought, man, that's probably not good. I accepted the Lord. And what I'm thinking of or doing right now, this is not good. Oh, you're doing it. <laughs> you're sinning. But there's something now nagging at your heart. It changed you. Something changed you. And this is what changed you. The free gift is what changed you. I don't know how much clearer I can make salvation. That's as clear as it gets. It's written right here. There is nothing else that needs to be done. That's it. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now let's read a warning. When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in synagogues and in corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. These people who outwardly express this, oh no, I, I pray in public and I, and I tithe and I do all these. These are called saints. These are not the bride. These people are working for their salvation. There is a very clear warning here in Luke 11.5. Very clear. They have their reward. There's a reward for being good, you know. Right here on earth, you have a good life. You do the right thing. You don't cheat people. You don't lie. You don't steal. You work hard. And you will move up in your company. And you'll make money. And you'll have a decent life. But that's your reward, not heaven. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. Go to a quiet place by yourself. And when thou hast shut thy door... Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. Pray to thy Father in secret, and accept the Lord into your heart. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So for those of you who say, I'm leading people down the wrong path with what I say, it's written right there. I'm leading them down the path of the bride. Surrender it all. Give it all up. Just like Alicia did, as soon as he saw Elisha go, he got a double portion. Just throw it all away because there's nothing on this planet that you've done that warrants going to heaven. I wanted to clarify this and I wanted to be firm about this because I see people are galvanizing. 
Is it possible that there is a saint out there going, you must, if you receive this, oh, that's it, you're going to hell. How could you possibly say that to somebody? Because now it's been a lot of years. I said it when it first came out. You see my videos back then? It ain't it. That ain't it. It's not it. Guess what? It wasn't it. That was not the mark. It's a precursor, just like the barcode was, just like the credit card was. All these things, Social Security, and, oh, that's it. That's the mark. They've been saying this since I was a kid. I've heard of this mark since I was a kid. This is the same thing. This is preparing people to accept the mark. They don't want you to plant, uh, me to plant that, or you even, all of us. They don't want us planting that mustard seed. They don't want any resistance whatsoever. So every so often, they bring out something new to make people, oh, Social Security number, yeah, sure. And you know what happened? Everybody lined up for it. How about the barcode? I knew a guy. I knew a guy that would not buy anything that had a barcode on it because he said that's the mark of the beast. He wasn't doing it. And he, as far as I know, spent a lot of years buying things that did not have a barcode on it until everything had a barcode on it. Uh, I didn't stay in touch with him because I was a kid when I heard about it. And it didn't sit right with me what he was saying, but he was convicted in it. Uh, what does that make him? Is that a guy that doesn't believe in going to hell? No. It makes him a saint. He's working, but he's not going to hell. And that's the most important thing. So that's what we're working on. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We are not supposed to. I, could I possibly bring a saint over into the, the, the bride, to be a bride on the bride side and say, throw it all away. Throw it away. Throw it all in the trash. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how many times you got baptized. I don't care about any of those things. If you are a bride, the bride has the same story. Wheat and tares. They're identical. You can't tell until the very end when the bride then bows over. But the wheat stands proudly. I've done this. Just like the rich man that came to Jesus. The stories are all over the Bible. I don't see how anybody can miss them. But Luke knows the order of all things. You missed it because... The rich man came to Jesus, and Jesus knew, he knew that he had pride in his heart because he had done all of these things. And it is filthy rags. All your works are as filthy rags. Those without works are going, uh, what does it say exactly? I have to remember the passage. Oh, for without works, faith is dead. We have opposing, uh, we have opposing uh, passages. What do we do with them? How do we reconcile your works is filthy rags, and without works, you're dead. How do you reconcile those two? Simple. We have no works to offer. We come penniless to Jesus. He gave it all. He did it all. Then we have works. We look exactly like them. We're donating money. We're not. We're, we're, we're minding our mouth and not cursing. We're going to work every day. We're being faithful. We're paying our bills. We're doing what we're supposed to do. We look just like them. We don't. We can't. You can't tell us apart. But God can. Don't worry about that. God can. Are either group going to the lake of fire? No. The bride is a small group. The saints are a massive group because they have worked, but. When the rapture occurs, they will see that they missed it and they will tear off this world and they'll bow down on their knees. Now they will bow down. Now they will see the truth. Okay, enough of that. I wanted to get that out and clarify that. Sometimes I think people are like, well, yeah, you're right, but I still didn't. There is nothing. I, I can't stress that enough. There is nothing. You will do. You will have works because of what you are. You will not have works to become what you think you want to be. It's not going to work that way. That's not how it works. I wonder if I could ever get a saint to, to buy into that. I don't know. Let's see here. Oh, like I said, yeah, you go to a prayer closet. Now, Satan. When was Satan created? Remember, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is from eternity past to eternity future. He's, he was not born. He has always been here. It is a concept, 
next, nearly impossible, next to impossible for the human mind to conceive of, but it is true because the Bible tells us so. Does God live in heaven? No. God created heaven so the angels had a place to live. God created earth for humans to have a place to live. Humans in our current condition cannot be in heaven. Angels in their current condition can come to earth to visit. They are more powerful than we are currently, but we will be as them later on. So when was Satan created? Well, I'll show you. Now again, God is not stuck in the confines of heaven. As a matter of fact, there is a story I read about Enoch was taken from level to level to level to level in heaven. There are nine levels that he attained when he was up there. And from his vantage point, he could see how this massive clock worked. The set time for the rapture was done and said it was over with. He could look up into the 10th heaven. He said that's where the throne of God was. So technically, I guess you could say, you could say God's not stuck in the confines of heaven, but we are never going to attain the 10th level of heaven. It is all the way up, and he was able to gaze upon it, if you read in the book of Enoch. And he could see how all of time was set up by God when God set it up on the fourth day. Now, Satan. This is how God views Satan before he fell. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of, stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created. Satan is a created being. He is not a god of any kind. He was created. Although be it the nicest angel, the most glorious angel God ever created, he was still created. When was he created? I'm going to show you. Till the iniquity was found in thee. What happened? On the first day, God created Satan. His name was Lucifer, and he was beautiful and perfect in every way. On the sixth day, he created man. Satan was furious that God created man in his image. Satan was not created in the image of God. He was beautiful and perfect in his way, in the way of angels. But he became jealous when he found out that mankind was, cre was created to worship him through salvation and that Satan was created to worship him through creation. The angels worship God because they were created. We have a deeper, more meaningful um, worship than Satan does because we worship out of our sin, out of our iniquity out of our salvation if we are so thankful so unbelievably thankful that jesus came here and did this for us we didn't deserve it i don't know and we're all full of sin there's not one of us out there that can look back on their life and say eh, i didn't do too bad i did pretty good if you can say that you're probably a tribulation saint if you can look back and say oh lord i can't believe i did that i am so ashamed of that that is the Holy Spirit that's inside of you, working on you. Satan was perfect, perfect in all of his ways from the day that he was created till iniquity was found in him. His iniquity was jealousy. He was jealous over the fact that he was the most beautiful all the way up until the sixth day when God created man in his own image. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Now he's violent. He's very angry. He is so jealous and eaten up with it so badly he can't see straight. And thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God and I will destroy thee. When's this going to happen? This is going to happen on rapture day. Satan is still in heaven. He is in heaven right now. It might be rapture day or it might be the day that the seal six happens. I'm not sure which um, because he's there um, telling Jesus about all of you. Look at him. Look how terrible he is. How are you going to save this guy? Jesus is like, I got this covered. I got it. 
yeah, but he just did this and he, she did that. I can't believe she thought of doing something horrible like that. Uh, I got this. He was created in my image. What? And that just makes him more infuriated. I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was filled up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. He was the most beautiful up until we were created six days later. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Satan's coming down here. He's going to be down here. They, we, this, the kings of this earth will behold him. They will think he's God. He's going to get his last seven years, and then he's done. When was he created? In the beginning, God created the heaven. Where was God before he created heaven? He always was. He, was, he maybe created himself a place up on the 10th heaven. I don't know how that works, but God always was. And he always will be. So this is the point right here in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Something happened before the first day. God created heaven and earth before the first day. The angels have to have heaven to live in or earth. Humans have to have the earth to live in or heaven once we're changed. We can go back and forth once we've been changed. We can't now. We're stuck here. Go out there into space and take off your helmet and see what happens. <laughs> Meet Jesus long before, long before you wanted to. Next, the day of light. This is where I think Satan was created. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Jesus always was, God always was, and the Holy Spirit always was. There is a light that is created here, but the sun, moon, and stars are set in place and created on the fourth day. What is this light? And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light and that it was good. At first it was good. But then Satan became jealous, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the night uh, the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. That's what happened on the first day. On the fourth day, he creates something that keeps time for days, months, seasons. Let me see if I, I think I have to go here. At, whoops, I think I have to go right here. Uh, okay. Yeah. Notice here. And God said, let there be light in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, for seasons, for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Whatever he created right there, it's done. Whatever he created right there, it is for seasons, it's for days, it's for years. That's it. And then he continues to create. And God made two great lights. When God says he made something, that means he had previously created it. It's like saying, I created this table. No, you didn't. You made a table. You can't create a table because you have to use the wood God created in order to make the table. God already had this here. Whatever it was, it was already here, which it says, as we saw up here in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, but down here, and God made two great lights. The greater light was to rule the day, and the lesser light was to rule the night, and he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw it, and it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now remember this, the fourth day is the day that Jesus went to the cross. Jesus went to the cross on the fourth day of the week, on a Wednesday. We'll just call it Wednesday. The fourth day of the week. What's left? There are three days left. What happens on the fifth day? He creates all the animals. What happens on the sixth day? He creates man. What happens on the seventh day? The 7,000 years. The seventh thousand years. The last thousand years. Where did it go? Maybe it won't go. There we go. 
and the seventh day God rested. So, you know how they tie in, um, you know how they tie in uh, every day of creation to a thousand years? Well, you can also tie that into the cross um, and Satan. And so on the fourth day, on Wednesday, Jesus, in fact, went to the cross. Um, he rose on the first day of the week, Sunday morning. So he was in the grave, a full, a absolute full. Uh, he died at three o'clock in the afternoon, but you don't count that day on Wednesday. So Wednesday night, Saturday night, sorry, what am I doing? <laughs> Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, three day, three nights, he was in the grave. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, he was in the grave. So Saturday night, became Sunday morning as soon as night fell, and he rose at some point that night. He did not complete the night any more than he completed the Wednesday when he went to the cross at, at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Same thing. When he rose, I think it's actually three and a half days. Honestly, I think he rose at about 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, that would give us three days and 12 hours in there. So, All right, let me go back to this. I don't want to drag this out too long. I wanted to show you that um, on the timeline, Jesus would have gone to the cross on the fourth day. Now, we're in the 2,000 years since then, which would be Thursday and Friday. Um, and then Saturday will be the last 1,000 years. All right, God rest. Back to this again. The translation in the Bible, because... The Jews were changed over to the moon calendar. There are so many people that will say, well, this calendar is over 2,000 years old. It is, but it is wrong. The Jews are wrong. The word pneumenia that we find in, in, in the original Greek, pneumenia, means new month. It does not mean new moon. And it certainly doesn't mean new month. It means new month. So... I found this study that you too can go find uh, on uh, on the internet, and this is a, a thorough word study about. And, and I'd go, go if you're Greek, tell me, am I right? Does numenia mean new month? Remember, the Greeks introduced the new moon calendar to the Jews in 400 BC. So this new moon calendar has been around for 2,400 years. It is hard to break that. Uh, ideal, um, just like it's hard to break the ideal that you must do something for salvation, it is hard to break the idea that um, we are to start our month or year or something on a slave. It just simply what they were looking for was the four star alginib up there. Two to three witnesses were looking for the four star alginib. That that's all they were looking for, and it skirts along the horizon every year on March 16th and again on September the 14th every single year. Here, we're coming up on September the 14th in less than a month. The fourth star of Alginib in the uh, Pegasus constellation will skirt along the horizon in Israel on September the 14th. So we read, uh, Numenia appears in the New Testament, but also adds the places where it was used in the Old Testament Septuagint. Most Bibles translate this word as new moon, but evidence for that interpretation does not come from the word itself, nor from Scripture. I have found no evidence in the Bible that they ever looked for a new moon to start a new month. To obtain a true understanding of this word, uh, these scriptures usually need to be meditated on, and he goes on to show where these words are used. You can go find this. It's up at the top of the website, Logos Apostolic. Logos Apostolic. Uh, you can go look this up for yourself. I've been saying this for nearly three years now. The moon has nothing to do with the head of the year. It has nothing to do with the beginning of a month. The moon is there, just like we have proof that Jesus was born on September the 29th, because it's exactly 40 days later to the very day, which, by the way, on the eighth day, Jesus is circumcised on the last day of tabernacles. He was born on the first day of tabernacles, circumcised on the last day, 33 days later, just like the Bible said, we see up in heaven on November the 8th, the moon, a blood moon, turning white as it eclipses Uranus, which I believe means does that mean heaven, I believe? So it is exactly, how does that happen? How does that even possibly happen? It happens because we're being directed to when his birth was. 
it's like uh, it's like this guy at work. He's a worker. He works uh, hard every day at being good and doing the right thing. I don't, and it makes him mad. He gets very upset because I'd say you don't have to do anything. You just, just accept the free gift. It's done. It's over with. After that, you will. You'll have works. You'll have fruit. But he gets mad at me, and I'm like, you love Jesus so much. When's his birthday? I said, you, I said, hey, I, I asked him the other day. I said, you got, you got a best friend? Because I'm always teasing on him. He's always teasing. He sends me verses, and I counter those verses with verses that counter what he's saying about you have to work. Uh, but I love him, and he's a great guy, and uh, he's a saint. He is a saint. He is not looking for the return of Christ. He says, nobody, man, no man knows a dairy hour. You can't even, don't even try. You're wasting your time. It's never going to happen. He is what he is, right? And I can't change him. I thought maybe if I showed him enough, he would change, but he is locked in. He's locked in and he, he, he has blinders on. He cannot see except for what he sees. So he, uh, I said, you love you, you have a best friend? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, when's his birthday? And he's like, uh, I forget what he said, July 10th. I'm like, you know your best friend's birthday? That's awesome. He's like, yeah, we've been best friends forever. I'm like, yeah, so you love Jesus? And he's like, yeah, more than your best friend? He said, yeah. I said, then what's his birthday? But I, I don't know. I'm like, how do you not know that? How do you not know when Jesus' birthday is? It's your best friend in the whole wide world. He saved your eternal soul, right? He's the one you're working so hard for. How do you not know when his birthday is? And he's like, well, I mean, that's not important. To, to, I have him in my heart. And I'm like, okay, I, I'm not going to obviously argue with the guy. But Jesus was born on September the 29th at night, which is September the 30th. He was born on Tabernacles. And this blood moon that happened on November the 8th simply confirmed that to me, that that happened. Uh and that he was circumcised, and that he Mary conceived on Christmas Day, and that Mary met with uh, uh, Elizabeth seven days later as the egg travels. I don't know, everybody knows this: an egg travels on the uterine uh, down the tube to the wall and attaches itself, and it takes about seven days. So, let me get back into this. So, everywhere you see the Bible has translated new moon. It's not their fault. This has been around for 2,400 years, long before, 400 years before Jesus came, and long before the Bible was written in print. They have made a mistake. The Bible, wherever you see new moon, it is new month. It's the new month. New month, new month. He's, he's gone in and shown how the actual translation for numenia is new month, not new moon. And if you go into the original Greek and look up the word numenia, it will tell you it's new month. And I've showed you this before. The new moon calendar was the official calendar of the Greeks. And when Alexander the Great conquered the Middle East in the 4th century BC, the lunar calendar was introduced and was uh, gradually accepted by most of the people, except for the Hebrew people. In 172 BC, King Antiochus appointed Menelaus as Jerusalem high priest to introduce the Greek way of educating the young people and to completely Hellenize the Hebrew people. He also sent a senator from Athens to give the Hebrew people an ultimatum. So that's where it started. There is a warning in the book of Jubilees. It's extra biblical, but there is a warning in here. Jubilees. 6, 34 through 38, and all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the path of the years and will forget the months and seasons and Sabbaths and they will go wrong as to the order, as to all the order of the years. For I know and from henceforth I will declare it unto thee and it is not of my own devising for the book written before me and on the heavenly tablets and uh, the division of the days is ordained. There are 364 days in a year. There are currently 364 days in a year. There are not 365 and a quarter days in a year. Our day is not 24 hours long. So we have what we call to make it. It's, it our day is actually 23 hours and 56 minutes long. That four minutes a day 
over the course of 364 days is exactly one day and a quarter. That's why we have 365 and a quarter days, because it is a lie. But we're not wrong in the years, because every year starts on the same day. The same thing with the Enoch calendar, that every year starts on March 17th. Every single year, always March 17th. That's, that's our New Year's Day, March 17th. The last Sabbath, whatever day, the last, now that, that, what they've done now, when they've done what they've done, is changed the name of the day, which God never used. He used a number for each day, the first day, the second day, the third day. We gave each day a name, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. What happened when that happened, we called Saturday the Sabbath, which we should have never done. It should have always been called the seventh day. If it were still called the seventh day, we would have not have gone wrong. For example, this year, in 2022, the calendar was actually correct. It's right about every 11 years. In 2022, it was correct. Wednesday was the Sabbath. Wednesday is the day Jesus went to the cross. Wednesday is the day God created time. Sunday is the day God rested. Sunday is the day Jesus rose. You have two Sabbaths in a week. You have one on Wednesday. You have one on Sunday. This year, it happens that Sabbath falls on Thursdays and on Mondays. If we hadn't named the days, we would know that. So, for this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony and an unclean day a feast day. This is why God hates our feast days. He hates them because we are wrong as to when they land. This fourth star of Algin, they weren't looking at a moon. This is what they were looking at. They were looking at this. It happens every single year on March the 16th. And this is, also happens to be the day of equal parts, where there are 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night, or a few moments less on each side because of the four minutes. But this happens, and it happens again to recalculate and make sure we're accurate, that we haven't messed up. It happens again on September the 14th. The, the square of Pegasus also appears, as shown above, on September the 14th, every year, rising. In March, it's setting. That skirts along the horizon on March 16th, and then on March 17th, you won't see it. But on September the 14th, the day before what the Jews call the New Year, again, they did not obey God, that is not the New Year, but because it, it moved from September the 15th, the Feast of Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets, moved to March the 17th. Again, that's why Jesus didn't move when he found out Lazarus was dead. He sat there for two days because he knew he was in a two-day feast. He knew that he was in Rosh Hashanah. So the Jews will still celebrate Rosh Hashanah in September. And here we have also the four-star Pegasus skirting along the horizon on September the 14th. Every year, this time, it's rising. Tomorrow or the next day on the 15th, it will be above the horizon. And you can see this from some specific spot in Israel, and that's why we look to Israel to know when we start our timing, when we start our year. In Enoch 74:12, and the sun and stars bring in all the years exactly so that they do not advance or delay by position by a single day unto eternity, but completeth the year with a perfect justice in 364 days. Okay. Hey, John 644 on the wall behind me. Hey, Jesus' birthday. I'm sorry, Jesus on the cross. <laughs> Said that wrong. Let's see, what did I highlight this? Oh, I noticed this. Did you notice this? The thief on the cross. This is the only place where you will see that the thief on the cross has said, uh, remember me. Jesus said unto him, and he says here, and he said unto Jesus, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto thee, thou, uh, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Where paradise was located at the time was in Shoel. It was in hell. It was not in heaven. Jesus went to hell. Not to the lake of fire. They are different places. They are not the same. Jesus was not sent to hell to be tormented. He had paid the price. It was over with at the cross. When he said it was finished, it was finished. He went to hell or to paradise to lead captivity captive. This is where people waited for our Lord to conquer death. And he went there. And when he rose, many of the graves burst open with him and they went into the city. 
So, where did the thief on the cross go? He did not, he is not a bride. He is not a, in most stories that you read in the Bible, I would say all of them, uh, where you see uh, somebody like this coming to an understanding. The thief on the cross had no works, he had nothing, he had nothing to offer, but he went to paradise. He did not go to the third heaven. He had no time to have fruits, to gain crowns, to do this work that we talk about, not unto salvation, but unto reward. That today thou shalt be with me in paradise. How shocking was it for the thief on the cross to realize when he woke up, he was in hell with Jesus. He was in Shoel, where paradise was located. Not for punishment, for relocation. Jesus moved paradise to heaven. It says that, you will find that in the Bible, I don't recall exactly where. I knew a man above 14 years. He goes to the third heaven. And then he says it again. I knew a man above. Uh, I knew a man, uh, whether in the body or not, I don't recall, whom went to paradise. It's two different locations. But they're both in heaven. They're both now located in heaven. Well, third heaven always was, but paradise has been taken to heaven. All right. So, oh, I meant to tell you. Who's the bride? Where's the bride? If this group is the saint that's going to go, he's in tribulation. <laughs> he's, he's in tribulation. He's hanging on a cross. He has nails through his hand. He's about to die. And he says, remember me. And he's going into paradise. Who's the bride? Where's the bride at? The bride is Barabbas. Barabbas is standing up there with Pontius Pilate. He doesn't speak. The Bible doesn't have one recorded word from the mouth of Barabbas because he has nothing to offer. He is a bride. He doesn't deserve it any more than anybody else does. I don't deserve this. I don't know why he did this and opened my eyes to see these things. I don't know why he did it. Same thing to Barabbas. Barabbas was up there and Jesus took the place of Barabbas. Barabbas is the bride. The saint that goes into tribulation, that is crucified next to him, goes into paradise. Now, who goes into the millennium? In the other passages in Mark and in Matthew, you will not see this thief asking him to remember him. They mock him. They laugh at him. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, they were mocking him, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. They had to see a sign. They, didn't, they would not believe just on faith. They had to see something. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. How come you don't see that story here where he went to paradise? Because Luke knows the order of all things. Same thing in Matthew. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his, this says teeth, but in his face, threw the same words in his face. Where are we, wor who are we worried about here? I had my daughter redo this. She has such nice handwriting. I don't. I have sloppy handwriting, as you can see by my timeline. All right. So she redid this. The first circle is the bride. This bride goes to the third heaven. They have fruits of the proof of their salvation. They do not have works because they think they're going to get saved. They have fruits. Jesus is called the bridegroom. The ten virgins are all, are, the five virgins with oil are the saints. The five virgins without oil are the Jews. When Jesus comes to collect the five with oil, he is called a bridegroom. He cannot be called a bridegroom if he is not with his bride. The bride is already gone. That's why when you read the story, excuse me, of the ten virgins, you will see that they are um, bridesmaids. They are not the bride. They, and, and I had this wrong initially a few years ago, but I listened to Wayne over it. We are the overcomers, and... When he said it, it set perfectly with my spirit because I had not seen that little part where it said, the bridegroom cometh. He cannot be called a bridegroom if he's not with his bride. He is coming back at this moment for the saints. He finds five of them with oil. These are the ones that knelt down and said, cast off the world and put on 
the word of God, just like Alicia did, and, and they've accepted the fact that they really don't have any works and that they really do need Jesus for everything. And he's the only one. This group is the only one that is heart positive. We are calling this gathering together of the great multitude a rapture. A rapture is defined as taking out of imminent danger. These people that are in tribulation are under the wrath of God and are already in danger. They are not raptured. They are gathered. You will see this um, in, uh, let me think, first, is it first, yeah, first Thessalonians 4, you will see a harpazo, a catching up. And in second Thessalonians 2, you will see a word called gathering. These two words do not match. In the original Greek, one is called a harpazo, and the other one is called a gathering. They are not the same. In 2 Thessalonians 2, these people are gathered. These are the saints of the tribulation. The first group is harpazo. They get crowns and brilliant white robes. We do not wash our robes white in the blood of Christ. He simply gives us a white robe because he did it all and we know it. We escape all these things. It numbers how many of them we are. We simply, when we read that in Revelation, well, the, there was a bunch of angels there, and then there was 24 elders, and then there were four beasts. So that means, um, you know, that means there's 28 uh, of these elders, and then we have, you know, over 100 million angels there. Angels are not and will not ever be counted for salvation. That number is for salvation. That Angels are not counted in this. They were worshiped God because they were created. They were not saved. As a matter of fact, there's a story in Enoch where uh, the fallen angels come to Enoch and say, hey, can you think God could like include us in that salvation plan? Because if not, you know, we're doomed and we, and we don't want to be doomed. And Enoch goes and asks, and God said, no, they are not Human, they're not created in my image. Salvation is for the humans. It is not for the angels. They have made their choice. They should have thought about following Satan and his jealousy. One third of them will be judged. There is no escape for them. There is no redemption for them. There is no death on the cross for them. Jesus did not come here for them. He came here for us. He came here for those that he created. If only you would accept that free gift. Now, we escape all these things. How many of us are there? There are 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands upon thousands. This group, like I showed you before, Barabbas and Leah. Leah was found in that tent in the morning, not Rachel. Leah is an elder. Barabbas is an elder. When we get to heaven, Barabbas will be there in the third heaven with all of the same rights as we do. As terrible as he was, you can't judge him because we're all just as bad. Leah and Barabbas are in heaven. They are the bride. Um, with Jesus, when they called the bridegroom, yeah, he was called a bridegroom, so he uh, he already had his bride. We were already known from before the foundations of the world, and we will carry a rod of iron into the millennium where we will rule as kings and priests for 1,000 years in the millennium because the people that go into the millennium are not saved yet. Here, the saints are gathered. They are not raptured. They are gathered in the tribulation. They are the main harvest, and they are taken into paradise, just like the thief on the cross. All ten virgins had fallen asleep. The five virgins with oil are the saints. They woke up, they came out. The other ones had to go buy. They had to go buy oil. They are the Jew that will be going into the millennium. They are still sinners that go into the millennium. This will be a perfect world. The curse that was put on Adam will be lifted. Jesus will rule and reign for a thousand years. We will rule and reign beside him with a rod of iron. And these people in the threshing floor will live longer than 100 years. It will be a strange thing for somebody to die before they're, like if they reach 100, it's like they're a young man still or a young woman. Um, 
They will inherit the earth. For 1,000 years, Jesus will rule and reign, and Satan will be loosed for a little season at the very end, and his temptation will be greater than any temptation we've seen on this earth to date. And at the end of that, there will be a war, and God will separate those who followed Satan at that point. Although I can't even, if I'm there with a rod of iron, I'm like, guess what's coming? I will warn them. But will they listen any more than the people today listen? I don't know. I mean, we're going to be appearing and leaving and we're going to be working on earth in that millennium. Jesus will be here. The holy city will not be here. God will not be down here. He cannot. If he's in the presence of any human that is not changed and has a perfect heavenly body, they will melt in his presence. That's how pure and perfect he is. He is pure and perfect in every way. So he cannot be near. He doesn't do that for himself. He does that for us. He saves us by staying away from us. He cannot be in our prayer. We know that from when Moses hid himself in the cleft of the rock. All he did was catch a glimpse of his ankles and he glowed and his hair turned white. He got radiated, right? So this group of people is who we will rule over. Now they will have child, children with no pain. There will be no more pain. It will be as easy as brushing your teeth to have a child. So they'll have lots of children during that thousand years. There will be no thorns and thistles growing up uh, every day that you have to go out into the garden and weed, you throw a seed and it's going to grow the most immaculate, most beautiful fruits and vegetables ever. They will have to eat. They are not changed. They do not have perfect bodies, although they will have to eat from the tree of uh, life. Twelve different fruits are produced. They have to eat it at each different kind of fruit on each different month. And it will cure. It's for the healing of the nations. It will cure their bodies so that their body might live two to three hundred years. I don't know how long, but they will have a bunch of children at the very end. They too will be changed. And then the holy city will come down here to earth on a new heaven, in a new heaven and a new earth. The angels must have a heaven to exist in. They cannot exist where God can. God always was. He doesn't, is not confined to heaven itself. Although he stays there, he is not confined to there. The ten virgins fell asleep. One group, that this group is gathered. They have palm branches. It might be a possible two-part gathering. I've heard somebody just say there was a seven-part gathering because there are seven churches and there are seven different gatherings. And I'm like mind blown. I don't know. I don't know what to think about that or where they find all that in Revelation. But I know of at least two part because again, Wayne over at We Are the Overcomers has really uh, done a good video on showing that. Um, a number no man can count. Rachel was the wife. The thief was the, th the thief, and he went in, also a wife technically, and he went into tribulation. How much tribulation do you think Rachel felt when she stood outside that tent for a week while her love that she wanted so badly, uh, she couldn't have him? How do you think the Jews are going to feel when God takes us and not them? Or even the saints, honestly, how are they going to feel when the bride is taken and not them? These are the five virgins with oil. They will show up in heaven in the sixth seal. They will have washed their robes white. Um, it reminds me of the story of Peter walking out in water. He walked out to meet Jesus halfway, but the storm was so great and he was so afraid and he just didn't quite have what it took. So he started to sink. But yet, guess what? Jesus grabbed him and brought him up. All right. Again, this concept, people are galvanizing. Choose today whom ye will serve. And they are certainly doing this right now. I see it everywhere. Um, there is a group that thinks uh, these are things that will not get you into heaven. Good works, baptism, church attendance, charity, feeding the poor, going to mass, the rosary, communion, parents, friends, clergy, political affiliations, positive thinking, being a good person. None of that will get you into heaven. Only the blood of Christ. Just ask the rich man that approached Jesus. He had it all. Oh, he had a list like, oh, I did, I've done all this. I'm, I'm fantastic. I'm good, right? No, you're not. Go sell everything and follow me. He couldn't do it. He was a saint. Uh, again, because uh, I'm seeing this, uh, the, I've seen people choose sides. Uh, some people were on the fence, but some of them are just jumped right over into the saint side. Some of them jump over into the uh, 
the uh, side of the of the bride, and uh, uh, it, it's uh, it's it's somewhat hard to watch, but it is okay because it's proof more proof to me that the rapture is about to happen, just like uh, Moses said at the mount, "Choose today whom you will serve." And three thousand, not even sure why, <laughs> what was going on in their head. Uh, they chose to stay with the golden calf, and guess what? 3,000 died over it. So Jesus is not one of the ways. Jesus is not the best of several ways. Jesus is the only way to God. Uh, oh, you know about uh, Patrick's uh, from uh, Hourly Watch. Uh, he's finding more and more and more stuff here Uh He's calling it the revelation sign of 2023. It almost is. Uh, the child is being born on September the 15th, which is Rosh Hashanah. But the moon will be at her feet on September the 18th, 19th, three days later. So there's something here going on. And I'll tell you what, if it hadn't have been for the Revelation 12 sign six years ago, nobody would be as intently watching the skies as they are right now. So a lot of stuff is being changed. God is moving people and he's pouring out the Holy Spirit and knowledge is being increased. We did not see a map like this in 2017, not even close. So this is, uh, it's really ramping up. I, I'm, I'm really uh, excited about this. Um, November the 8th is when that, uh, on 2022 is when the moon, the blood moon turned white as it crossed Uranus. Oh, I just happened to uh, notate that it was exactly 40 weeks later um, that, uh, the day would be August the 15th, and I don't know. Why do I have that? Oh, that's the day Jesus was baptized 40 weeks later, so that's kind of cool that it landed there. All right. Revelation 7. And one of the elders. Who are the elders? They are the bride. They are the older sister. They are Leah. They are Barabbas. They are us. The count of 10,000 times 10,000 has nothing to do with the angels. They are not accounted amongst the saved. They are counted amongst the created. They are not counted in that passage. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? This is one of the elders talking to John. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And this verse stumps me, and I'm still working on it. There's a couple of ideas that, I, that I've that i bounced off several people in the Discord and my friends that I text about this verse right here. The verse, as we know it and have understood it and have been taught for some time, is that the rapture will occur, and then three and a half years later, um, after the Antichrist is revealed, but before he goes in, to uh, proclaim himself to be God, uh, the two witnesses are killed. Therefore, that must mean that the saints go home in seal six, and that it takes three and a half years to open up six seals, and then it takes three and a half more years after that ha happens to go through seven trumpets and seven bold judgments in the last three and a half years. My problem is that when you read Revelation 6, it goes so quickly through those six seals. It starts out with us in heaven, with our crowns, casting them at the feet of Jesus, and then it gets here. This is Revelation 7. It gets here so quickly, long before all of the other stuff. My argument is, and what I've been thinking is for so long, is that the six seals are opened up very quickly, and they appear to be in heaven in the sixth seal. So... The problem I have with this verse, and I need to reconcile it, is that it says great tribulation. That would mean the two witnesses would have seen this, but they were killed before he goes in and proclaims himself to be God, right? So, um, Kevin and my little group said, it's all tribulation. Any part of being under the wrath of God is great tribulation. It's like no time we've ever seen. He said all seven years are considered great tribulation. If that's true, then my concept of the first six seals being opened up relatively quickly, and then also another problem I have is that God will turn his attention back to the Jews for those seven years. Oh, but then there's this huge group that appear after three and a half years in heaven that no man can count. I don't know where they come from. 
I know who they are. They're the saints. I just don't see them going three and a half years later. I see them going a lot sooner than that. I could be wrong. It's something I'm still working on. Um, any Bible verses that might shed light on to how long after the rapture of the bride do the saints go? Because quite frankly, and as all of you know, we have dear friends that are wonderful people. They love Jesus and they work so hard at it every day to be good and to do the right thing. And so are we going to, and, and again, I mean, we're closed ourselves in our chambers, right? We're supposed to close ourselves into our chambers and wait for the indignation to pass. Just like the Bible says, we're sealed. But do we wait three and a half years for them to show up? I'm not seeing that in the seals opening. I'm seeing it repeat itself very quickly. I'm seeing that this great multitude from every tongue, every, I mean, this 10,000 times 10,000 from every tongue, every nation, every tribe, and then just a short while later in seal six, and we have this great multitude that no man can count from every tribe, every nation, every tongue. It was really quick that it got to the, from one point to the other. So we have a lot of friends that... Uh, I believe uh, we'll be waiting for on the other side. And uh, while they're going to go through it, I don't know how long it'll take them to drop to their knees and realize uh, that that uh, mustard seed you planted was actually true and they cast off all their works. Okay, they, let's see. And, and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This is a different group. They have palm branches. They have worked. They have gone into the tribulation. They have had to wash their robes. They put on the uh, mantle of uh, Elisha. They've received a double portion, and uh, they've come out of great tribulation. And they're a great multitude that no man can count. This right here, you can go to this, uh, I'm, I think it's in our, maybe I did find it in the Discord, Raptures of the Revelation. Let me see something here. I don't know what happens when I turn this sideways, but he goes into, I don't know what happens on your on your phone or if, if it, what it does on your television, because I've never done this, but he teaches over here on the left seven different raptures and he shows them all. And I don't, I don't know. That was, uh, it was quite interesting when I saw it. I'd be curious actually to go study it a little bit. I didn't have time. Because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. God is warning us to watch, to try to figure it out, to get to that day. If we had known, if they had known that Jesus was there before, if they had opened their eyes, some did know he was there, but if they had opened their eyes to see that Jesus was actually there, then uh, they might not have crucified him. We're so happy it all went down like it did because it gave us the opportunity to become a bride and to be accepted into uh, into uh, Jacob's tent, as it were. So, um, yes, they uh, they did not know the time of the visitation, and the same thing is happening now. Nobody's looking for it. There's eight billion people on this planet. We are a small pocket of people. I don't care. I don't care if you found uh, 10,000. I don't care if I had, you know, I don't care if I had uh, 100,000 subscribers on the uh, YouTube. It's just a drop in the bucket. Uh, there's even if even if all 150 million people that are watching and dreaming about this day were on here, it's still a drop in the bucket. It's only about 3% of the population. Uh August the 18th. Where is that? That was yesterday. That's where the child is right now. The child is just entering, I guess, her womb, and it will be exiting on September the 15th, exactly. And the moon you see is up there uh, by her head. It'll be at her feet on, uh, well, the following month, honestly, it'll be at her feet on uh, the 18th of September. 717. Okay. Where am I at? Okay. This is awesome. Okay. Let me do this. Let me see if I can get you to see this here. Somebody, not somebody, Sister Sandy from the Discord put the timeline into this format. Uh, the one I'm showing you has one little mistake. I believe she's already fixed it uh, online, and I'll show it to you real quick. So no, it's not that uh, big of a deal. But go to this website right here. 
And you can go straight to my timeline from this uh, link right here, endtime-studies.com, and you can look up this timeline uh, that uh, has been, I've been literally building this thing for three years, and everything I find I put onto it. Uh, and go go down there and download it and look at it for yourself and see if I'm wrong. See if I'm wrong. See if the 16th is not the day of equal parts. If the fourth star, Algenib, does not skirt along the horizon on that day. Lazarus died on that day. Mary and Martha would have been unclean as they buried Lazarus because they touched a dead body. They were unclean for seven days. They had to perform a ceremony. The very next day, St. Patrick's Day, is always Rosh Hashanah. It is always ahead of the year. This is why Jesus didn't move for two days. He sat there for two days, then he walked for two days to go resurrect Lazarus on the March the 20th. So on March the 16th, he knows the next day is Rosh Hashanah. He sits there on the 17th and 18th. He walks on the 19th and 20th. Mary and Martha have performed their ceremony on the third day. So by the fourth day, they can be in, they're still unclean until the 7th. But they can be out because they performed that third day ceremony. Lazarus is resurrected on the fourth day. That's why he sat for two days. There's an excuse or a reason why these things we've surmised for so long. Why? I just don't understand. Why didn't Jesus just go? That's why he didn't. It was Rosh Hashanah. It's a two-day feast. You can't travel on a two-day feast. He knew that. Nobody else did because nobody obeyed God when he said, change the head of the year from September the 15th to March the 17th. Let's see. Mary and Martha were clean after seven days. The triumphant entry happens on Nisan 10, which is always March the 16th. The Last Supper. How did Jesus celebrate the Last Supper and still become the Passover? Simple. At nightfall, and, in, and this is God teaching us as we go forward at nightfall, it becomes the next day. As soon as the sun sets, it is now March 30th. It is now Passover day. It is a Wednesday. This is a Wednesday, the day Jesus went to the cross. He rose on the first day of the week on a Sunday. Three days later, he celebrated the Last Supper with his apostles as soon as the sun set in the upper room. He told them to go find a man in town bearing a picture of water and rent the upper room. He did his triumphal entry on the 26th. And you'll see sometimes where I will show a date and it and it's off by a day. That's because it happened the day before at nightfall. But I still have to count it from that day. But at nightfall at the Last Supper. You can go download this, look it over yourself, and you know we 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 will find out. You love Jesus so much, you should know when he was born. He was born on September the 29th, actually becoming September the 30th because it was nightfall in 3 B.C. 33 years and 182 days later, exactly, exactly, from the time Jesus was born, right here on Tabernacles, it was 14 days after the head of the year, to the time Jesus went to the cross, from the head of the year, it was 14 days to the cross from the head of the year. It mirrors exactly, Jesus was born in 3 BC on September 30th, let's say, because it's at nightfall, and exactly 33 years and 182 days later, Jesus died on March 30th, 30 AD, at 3 p.m. You can see that down here, and uh, again, you can download this, and the numbers just start falling into place. They fall into place perfectly. There's no wiggle room. The further we go into this, the more events we find the more it cannot be changed. And again, the only one that I'm still working on is uh, Moses when he came down out of the mountain and went back up for 40 days. I have the first one correct. Moses, in fact, went up on Shavuot the day Jesus ascended. He sat up there in a the cloud. God pulled back the veil just like a husband. When he's married his bride, he pulls the veil back and gives her a kiss. He has given Moses the law. Moses, after 40 days, comes down and he casts down the stones. He is divorced from God and God marries um, us, the Gentile bride. And so there's a count after the time he throws down the tablets that I cannot quite figure out. But over here, where we are now, right now, it is, let's see, it's the 19th, 40 is it is a little 
five right now, four or five, I, I, I don't have the date here exactly, but it's a little five right now. It is August the 19th. The next high watch date that I'm looking at is the first day of the creation. The end from the beginning. God began creation on September the 11th. And just to sh uh, show us, Satan brought down the Twin Towers in, in an event that we have, heart we have never seen in the history of this world. Airplanes flying into massive buildings like that on September the 11th. This is the first day of creation. Four days later is the day God created time. And over here on September the 17th, this is this was the little mistake. It says down here in Tishri 3, September the 15th. I, I'm pretty sure she fixed it by now, but that's September the 17th, the seventh day of creation, the day God rested. Saturday, last day of creation, God rested up here at the top. So we are coming into, it's still a couple of weeks away, September the 11th. A lot of people are looking at other dates sooner than that. I don't have anything for the timeline. Uh, right now, the last thing I have is from Haggai 1 for a little 1, August the 15th, which was four days ago. So it's now a little 5 coming into a little 6. Uh, the next thing I'm looking at is a little 28, first day of creation, September the 11th, the end from the beginning. So, yeah, please go download this thing. This is much nicer than my scribbled up one. Uh, she spent a lot of time building this. And the only one little mistake I found, which she, and she even called it out. She even said, Repo Man's chart says 40 days, but what about these two days? And we had a little mistake that, that uh, actually comes back here to September the 15th and counts out 40, but the seven overlaps. There's some reason why creation overlapped uh, Feast of Trumpets. And again, Feast of Trumpets is a two-day feast, so God rested on the 17th. Uh, or Tishri 3, that's when it ended. It started on a little 28 and ended on Tishri 3. Let's see, where did I, whoops, let me find that. Jesus, oh, that's uh, Jesus' conception here on earth, not in life. Day one, he created light, September the 11th, a little 28, Monday, he created the firmament, September the 12th, the little 29. Tuesday, he created the dry ground, September 13th, a little 30. Wednesday, he created time. He put the sun, moon, and stars in place. That was a little 31, September the 14th. That would have been a Wednesday. Thursday, he created all of the animals. No animal could exist on this planet outside of time. God had to have the planet set. The atmosphere would have not functioned had the planets not been set in place and, and put exactly in motion at a specific time. And at that specific time, that was the day of equal parts. That's the day on September the 14th when the fourth star of Algenib skirts along the horizon. Friday, man was created. And then on Saturday, the seventh day, God rested. So I come here and I show you again in March. On March the 16th is a Wednesday. I show you from 2022 because the calendar is actually accurate. It's a Wednesday, March the 16th. March the 17th is the first day of the year, which is a Thursday. So March the 16th being the Sabbath, March the 16th, the day Jesus went to the cross, March the 16th, the fourth day, exactly 4,000 years from creation, Jesus goes to the cross. And for the, for the next two days or 2,000 years, um, Thursday and Friday, God is uh, we are in the age of grace for these two days. It is almost Saturday. It is almost the day of rest. It is almost the day we will be raptured. So each day of creation beginning on, well, it's not on this one. Uh, again, this is a 182 days back. So the first day of creation would be, if you were going to do the 182 days, would be March the 13th, which is a Sunday, the first day of the week. And then Monday, then Tuesday, then Wednesday is when he created time. On the 16th is the day of equal parts. It's the day the four star algae obscure song horizon. It's the day Jesus went to the cross and paid for the sins of the whole world. And then on Thursday and Friday is the previous 2,000 years, and then the 19th, 
which is this Sunday when Jesus rose, is when we will rise before the tribulation begins for seven years. So I think that's uh, I think that's all I had. Yeah. All right. Sorry, I think that went on too long, but I had to get that out there because maybe uh, somebody said something about, well, what if somebody's on the fence? And I've never really worried about them. Um, all I had to do was uh, put it out there that uh, um, Jesus does all the saving and, and he does all the work. He does it all. Uh, what you do after that is fruits and evidence of what you are. So, um, But then, you know, if there's somebody on the fence going, maybe I should go do something. Maybe I, I, I did the sinner's prayer, but maybe I need to do something more. And I just want to put that video out to say, don't. You don't have to do anything. You will, but you don't have to. I want to take that pressure off. You don't have to do anything. You will. You'll want to, not for salvation, not to be counted towards anything because of the spirit that now resides inside of you from the moment you became saved. And yes, once you were saved, once that Holy Spirit entered you, that's it. John 6, nobody comes to the Father lest the Father draw him. If you're feeling that draw, it's because God's calling you. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is ignoring that call. That's blasphemy. That is what the Bible says, is blasphemy. Ignore that call is blasphemy. So anyway, RepoMan64, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, if anything pops up that I see between now and September, well, I probably will make another video next weekend or maybe during the week if something pops up. But my next high watch day I am not calling it a rapture. So many people are so silly. They get in there, your rapture day passed. I'm like, I didn't say anything about a rapture last time. I just said Jesus was baptized on the 15th. I didn't say it was a rapture day. I just said on a little one, August 15th, fact, Jesus was baptized. I'm going to tell you this now. Fact, a little 28, September the 11th, was the first day of creation, 6,000 years ago. And I think the end from the beginning might indicate a rapture. But if it passes, we'll keep watching. We'll keep trying to figure this thing out until it finally happens, which it's going to very soon. So keep, take the gift that God gave you. He gave so many of us gifts and yours is unique and it's special and it's perfect for you. Don't expect that others will see your gift. There are some YouTube channels that are very coarse and brazen, but there are people who want to hear the Bible told to them that way because that's how they are. They need it that way. There are other channels that are very soft and delicate. There are very channels, uh, many channels that are analytical and numerical in, in, in their pursuit of this. But one common thread happens with all of them is that we're just trying to figure this out and none of us have all the answers and we're just trying to work together and to get to the bottom of when he's coming back because there is nothing more important to anyone one of us and then that day happening and we go home so don't look at anyone else's gifts and say that oh they're seeing feathers more than ever before so you know there's something wrong with them you don't get to do that that's their gift and that's what god gave them and we can't belittle somebody else's gift um god gives a certain measure some more some less but to all he gives a measure so take your gift and tell everyone God's given you a wonderful gift. You can see things that nobody else can. Think about it like this. If you're one of those 150-something million, above 100 million, less than 200 million, that, are, that the revelation counts as, as to who these elders are, if you're one of those, you've got the best gift of all. You're leaving before all these things. You won't be here to witness any of these things. You will not see the mark of the beast. You will not see... Um, the Antichrist. You won't know who he is. You won't care. I don't care who he is. I don't even look for him. I don't care. He's going to be revealed soon. He's over here. He's over there. This is the, I don't care. It has nothing to do with me. It's not my, my lot. I won't be in that part. I will be gone before any of that happens. Oh, the seals have already begun to be opened. And no, they haven't. You can trust the saint to tell you that they have. You can trust the saint to tell you that if you get this, you're going to hell because you know what? You just corrupted your DNA and you no longer belong to God. What? Stop. Stop. Stop and just drop to your knees and just trust in God 100%.
There is nothing else. You don't need anything else. You don't have to do anything else. Just put it all in his hands and say, God, I have nothing to offer you. I don't know enough to even begin to try to save myself. Do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? Go talk to him like a friend. He's your creator. He knows your name. He made you. He made you. You're so important to him. If you would just surrender all of it and accept him into your heart, you will go to heaven before all these things. You won't see a single seal. You won't see the mark of the beast. You won't see the Antichrist. You won't see any horseman riding of the apocalypse. You won't see any of those things. None of it. You actually, the Bible says, will be at a banquet in heaven. You will be sealed in your chambers until the indignation passes. You won't have to be here for it. So that's what we look forward to. And it's a beautiful place to be. The other place is a lot of work. I have heard them. You got to do this and, and this and that and, and this. And I'm just like, you guys just got to stop. But that's their lot. I can't make them stop because what happens when the rapture does occur? And we've told them they're crazy. Stop. We don't want them to go, oh, well, that's it. It's over. We were wrong. I guess that's it. Might as well go get the mark because that's it. It's not it. That is nowhere near it. There's a great multitude that appears. They're in heaven. They get changed bodies. They're going to live for all eternity. They're going to rule. They're going to be perfect in every way. They're going to be there. That's where we want to be. Our souls want to be reunited with the one that created us so badly we can taste it. Some of us feel like we have to do something to get there. Others know we don't have to do anything. But don't change their lot. Don't tell them, no, nope, there's nothing you can do. And then when they get into the tribulation, they'll be like, well, it wasn't the mark before. Turns out they were right. So I guess this isn't the mark now. No, it is. You were right. You were just at the wrong time, but you were right. You had the wrong time frame, but you were right. Go now and start looking for the Antichrist. Go now and start looking for the seals. Although I don't think you have to look very far. I think they're just going to be right there. Go now and uh, figure out. Uh, go, to, go to your knees and tear off the world just like Alicia did. And uh, excuse me, take that double portion. Anyway, I've probably gone on too long again. Apologize for that. But Repo Man 64, my, I'm also galvanized. If, if, that, if, if that is any indication of why this video is this long and, and why it's like this, I am also galvanized to tell you that if you are a saint and you are counting on something that you've done and you think all of this stuff is going on, it is not. And you have not done anything. Throw it all away and accept the Lord on his level. Exactly like he said, just like I read you from the very beginning of this video. It's him, 100% him, none of yourselves, lest any man shall boast. Not a single thing that you did. John 6, 44, the Spirit is calling you. He's calling you. If you've never heard of any of this stuff and they just wound up in your feed because I had a bunch of likes on this video or a bunch of new subscribers and somehow it just appeared in your feed, which I've heard of that happening, which is kind of cool, and you've never heard of any of this stuff before, it is as simple and you are easier to talk to than these others who are so legalistic that they can't get past the common, simple salvation plan that, that Jesus has. They can't get past that plan that they feel like they have to do something. You have never heard of any of this stuff. None of it. Your destiny is not a good place to go. So all you have to do is go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know. You don't need to tell anybody. And just go to your knees and pray and accept the Lord into your heart and have faith that he's going to do it all from there. That's it. He's, Jesus is going to take the wheel from that moment forward. And you'll notice that what you thought you wanted before that, there'll be this tugging, this new little nagging in your heart that says, no, I, I can't do that. That's not right. That doesn't feel right anymore. It will change you instantly. Will you stop sinning instantly? No. No, don't be legalistic. Don't be silly. Of course you're going to sin. But that nagging, that Holy Spirit in you telling you no, all the work is done by Jesus. So. Anyway, RepoMan64, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll chat with you again later as we uh, get closer to September the 11th, and it seems so far away.
but uh, we're in, again, it could happen any moment. I'm not saying that's the day. I would never say that's the day of the rapture. That would uh, that would uh, be terrible if I were wrong, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's not the day of the rapture, but it is the first day of creation, September the 11th, and that is a little 28, and we will be looking at that or any moment from now, and I'm listening for the the trumpet blast at any moment it could happen any time. I just sit there with my family thinking, man, this could just boom happen right now. We just don't know. So, all right, we'll chat with you again later. How do I do this? Let's see here. Okay.